Hi guys. Right. Oh, nothing to do with Sony, but something to do with something that begins with S. Yes. Sharpening. Here we've got a rather embarrassing shot. Yeah. <laughs> the plier with gear on my desk across the other side of the room, uh, which isn't there now because my room's all nice and tidy. Um, but yeah, this was a, just a, a quick test shot that um, I did uh, with a Nikon D850 and here it is in Lightroom and if I blow this up to something chronic like an 8 to 1 view and we just look at the camera here or well, where's it a better place to look and um, the reason I'm using this image is because it's very very good at showing up these sharpening halos that we get in Lightroom. Yes! Let me just explain to you, if you don't know, how Unsharp Mask works. Um, Unsharp Mask basically, I mean, there is a little video on my YouTube channel which shows you why Unsharp Mask works, but when it comes to a real image, what it tends to do is it looks for high contrast edges and it makes the light side of the edge lighter and the dark side of the edge darker. And that can be a right pain in the arse because when you put any meaningful amount of sharpening on, it makes the light side of the edge lighter than what is on the original and it makes the dark side of the edge darker than what is on the original. And so, or the unsharpened image, so to speak. And you can see it happening here. I mean, the light edge here is lighter than the wallpaper. And the dark edge here is darker than the actual back of this lens cap on this Eryx 15mm uh, uh, wide-angle lens. And no matter what we do in Lightroom in the sharpening module, we cannot remove that halo. And the thing is that white halos are always way more noticeable than dark halos. It's just the way our vision works. And so a lot of people find that the sharpening in Lightroom does the job for them, especially if all you do is take pictures to post on social media. So, of course, they go out and buy the biggest megapixel sensor they can find because they're all idiots. But anyway, that's beside the point. We're not going to go banging on about the Sony A7R Mark IV again. But, um, yeah, these halos can be a complete and utter pain in the arse. Yes, I'm sure you've all experienced them. And, as I said, no matter what we do inside of Lightroom, once we've got them, uh, we're stuck with them. We can turn the detail slider down, but you see, if I turn the sharpening slider up a little bit, you can see that halo is still there. It's just not as noticeable. The only way we can actually get rid now, just before anybody says, and um, let's put the detail slider back where it was, if we use the masking slider, where does it take the sharpening from? It takes it from in here not here we've still got the edge so it is a pain in the arse and the only way that we can truly get rid of that sharpening halo is by taking all the sharpening off we've still got a little tiny vestige of a halo there um, because this is the other thing about Lightroom the demosaicing algorithm has a little bit of pre-sharpening built in and I, I do wish it wouldn't have it um you know but it's what we've got it's what we're stuck with so what i'm going to show you now is why photoshop is so much better at doing this sort of thing than lightroom is and we're going to produce a really super sharp version of this image with no white halos around the edges Okay, and in order to do that, we need to send this image over to Photoshop. And just to save time, I've already got it open in Photoshop. And here it is, and it's been sent over with no sharpening on it. So if I take it up to 100%, I mean, it is up a D850, 
and uh, it is a sharp lens uh, it's done with a 2470 but you can see we've got no sharpening on and we have got a few vestiges of a sharpening halo around this camera and if we come out to a fit to screen view and then go and zoom in over here this is just about the best example of a sharpening halo that we've got just a residual one it's not much but it is there and um, really and truly we can't actually get rid of it but if we sharpen this image we're just going to exacerbate it or are we mm -hmm. no first thing i'm going to do is command or control j to duplicate this image onto a new layer and we're going to go to filter and we're going to go convert to smart filters because i'm going to convert this into a smart object uh, for the simple reason that it's going to be adjustable yes we're going to do some adjustable sharpening adjustable after the fact yes and um, so you can go and fiddle with it on your own images and get it looking just how you want it so there we go there's our smart object done and the first thing I'm going to do is run the sharpening, but then we're going to undo it, go back and do something else, and I'll, I'll show you why. So we're going to go to filter, and the only sharpening that's worth using is unsharp mask. Okay? Smart sharpen, sharpen edges, and all this malarkey. 99 times out of 100, it is just a complete and utter waste of time unsharp mask is the way to go except for one thing do not touch the threshold slider because the threshold slider is pathetic and it should be removed it's about as useful as a chocolate teapot yes it is it's crap so just don't touch it because we can create far more specific and far more versatile thresholds in another way which is what we're going to do in a moment but i'm just going to throw on here a um, sharpening amount of 500 with a radius of 0 0.5 and anybody who's bought my uh, sharpening course my pro grade image sharpening course will be very very used to seeing those numbers in the unsharp mask um, dialog box so we're just going to click ok and apply said amount of sharpening and you can see we've got these massive sharpening halos and the thing is we've got the white halo but we've got a dark halo as well and it'd be really nice if we could give ourselves a head start on that dark halo and the simple way to do that if i step back through my uh, good old history and i go back to convert to smart object and then i just go and flip over to the channels panel and i come over to the composite rgb channel and i just hold down command or control and i click and now we've got an active selection i come back to layers okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to invert that selection right and then I am going to apply my unsharp mask. So we'll come back to sharpen and we'll go to unsharp mask. And there it is, 500 and a radius of 0 0.5 pixels. And so we'll click OK. And fundamentally, you think it looks the same, but it doesn't. Have you noticed how that halo's dropped? That white halo is dropped and there's a little bit less black haloing. All we're now going to do is to double click on the empty part of this layer one, which is our sharpening layer, and it will bring up our layer styles dialog box. And the thing we're interested in is blendeth. Mm, blendeth fabulous and nobody ever uses it it's crazy right now this layer is this layer the highlighted layer the working layer the underlying layer is obviously this background layer 
Now what we can do is we can specify how this sharpened layer blends with the underlying layer, in other words, the unsharpened layer. And where are our white halos? Our white halos are up here in the lights. And all we're going to do is just grab this pointer or this highlight slider and we're going to move it to the left until that white halo starts to disappear. And just as it starts to disappear, we'll stop, we'll hold down the Alt key and we will fetch it off. And so what this is actually doing now is from 255 to 185, we can't see that sharpening layer at all. From 185, moving darker in tone down to 112, it is gradually revealed. So we've got one threshold, then a threshold ramp, and then from 112 all the way down to zero, that sharpening is being applied. Now then, is something you need to bear in mind. When you bring it to bear on other types of images, where you've got some recovered shadow detail, and you don't want to bring out the noise in the shadow detail, what we can do is we can either move this slider here to the right, or we can move this underlying layer slider. And what I always try and do is move the underlying layer slider because we are encompassing blurred tones, not sharpened tones. So where the underlying layer is black, zero, we don't want to see any sharpening. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this slider to the right, okay, to about 15. And then we're going to... Hold down the Alt key, and we're going to split that out, rather like that, and take it up to about 50, 60. And so we're now going to class that as done, OK. And if we turn that layer off, and we turn it back on again, look how much sharpness we've got going on there. And the black halos aren't really any as noticeable as you'd think. So... If we look at the image at 100%, and we just come and scroll across, let's go and have a look at this area here. Here we've got a, no, that's not an Irix 15, that's an Irix 11. Here we've got my classic old uh, Siggy 180 macro. Here we've got an Irix case, lens case, and look at the texture in the material there. And then this is the little case for my um, wired Lavalier mic. And if I just turn this sharpening layer off and then turn it back on again, look how fantastic that sharpening is. And there isn't a white halo in sight. Now, if you remember, I did say this sharpening is fully adjustable. So what we can do is we can come down to where it says unsharp mask and we can just double click. And then we could come in and we could turn that radius up from 0 0.5 to 1. You can turn it up to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, 1 1.2. You can turn it up to whatever you like. And now you can see we've actually increased the level of sharpness. Let's go back in here and have a look at these edges now. And now we can see we are, we've still got no white halo. What we need to do is to come back into the layer styles by double clicking in the empty part of the layer. And let's just move the blend if black slider for this sharpening layer in other words this one here let's just move that to the right Woohoo! we don't have to move it very far and we see that the dark halo starts to disappear see those pixels there and then all we need to do is out and split that slider off and just move it just up to 46 and there we go so now we've got rid of the new black halos that have been invoked by changing the unsharp mask radius from 0 0.5, in other words, half a pixel, to one pixel. And so there you go. So that's fully adjustable sharpening inside of Photoshop, and that is something you definitely cannot do inside of Lightroom. 
and there you go so that's super sharp and that's the unsharpened image and we left it in Lightroom and how we shifted it or how it was when we exported it out of Lightroom and remember that was the only way we could get rid of Lightroom sharpening halos now we've got a boatload more sharpening on the image way more than you could possibly put on it in Lightroom and not a single white halo anywhere and no really distinct black halo either so there you go hope you uh, sort of found that useful guys and um, yeah if you go and have a look over on my digital download store and have a look at my um, pro grade sharpening um, still discounted and um, down by 50% and uh, keep selling so if you want to go and have a look at it uh, feel free to buy it because you will find it's full of all sorts of little dodges and wheezes just like that one so there you go guys i uh, hope you found something useful there hope you enjoyed it and until the next time i shall see you very soon Tooroo.